Hey, Blueprinters, Tim Tritch here. Now, as the title of this video states, I ran across a little issue where my new, brand new UDM Pro did not really work right with my Verizon 5G home internet. Now, there's a lot of things I don't know about this issue, including the solution. I never actually found a solution to this issue, but I wanted to share my experience with you guys in hopes that maybe together as a community, we can find an answer to this little mystery here. Uh, but in the meantime, I wanted to kind of just talk through it, share with, with you guys what I learned, and uh, tell you what workaround I had to do in the meantime. Don't you just hate it when you get excited about something and it just doesn't work out? For me, it drives me crazy. So I wanted to share a personal experience I had with you guys when I attempted to upgrade my home network's backbone to 10 gigabit. Now, in order to do that, I needed to upgrade my router to the UDM Pro. However, I ran into some issues with my Verizon 5G. Now, this video is not going to be about upgrading your home to 10 gigabit and the pros and cons. That will be in a later video. Um, and it is not gonna be me bashing on Verizon 5G home internet. For me personally, I love the service. It has worked out very well. In fact, I even am the mini ISP for three of my neighbor houses and every one of those houses, including my own, runs off that Verizon 5G home internet router. It's worked awesome and it's only $35. We run terabytes of data through that thing. So this is not a bash against them. This is a, uh, an issue where there's equipment that is not compatible with each other. And I wanted to share that experience with you guys in hopes that A, we can maybe find a solution to this, or B, if you are in a similar situation, you know what works and what doesn't work. Okay guys, so in order to kind of shed a little light on this, I thought I'd paint you a little picture about what I had before, what I was looking to do, the equipment that was removed and introduced to create this little problem that we that was discovered here. So um, my home internet is Verizon 5G home internet, like I mentioned. My gateway with Verizon is the ASK-NCQ1338 gateway. Now this is just the cube-like one that's just meant to sit near a window or something. It's got an omnidirectional antenna with Wi-Fi 6 in it, uh, which I don't use. Um, and it has served me very well. It is not the one that sticks in a window that you kind of position and point towards a window and you gotta be very close to a tower. It is not that one at all. That is a different Verizon antenna. There's no antennas coming off of it. It is just the box itself. Behind that, I had originally a USG Pro 4 for my Unify Gateway. And it served me very, very well. I've had it for many years. Um, but it maxes out at a gig. That's the max speed it can do on the LAN side. And so I knew in order to do this change, I was going to have to replace that device. Behind that, I have a 48 port Pro PoE switch, which is capable of 10 gigabit. So I was covered from that standpoint on the switch. And then behind that, I have my access points and all my clients. That's my setup. It's very, very simple, um, as you can see. Now, in addition to this, one of the things I was hoping to be able to accomplish with this upgrade was... Um, I'd like to be able to edit videos through my network, like through the network space. So I also have a Synology NAS that I also upgraded to 10 gigabit um, in order to see if I was able to, you know, um, edit videos that were stored on my NAS over the network as opposed to storing all the files locally on my laptop. That was one of the things I was kind of testing with this 10 gig. Um, however, I knew no matter what, I was going to have to upgrade my gateway to the UDM Pro. So. After I got all the equipment in, um, I basically uh, just restored my old config to the UDM Pro. It was a very simple process um, and, and basically started utilizing that to take over my network. But I immediately ran into problems. I, things were not working as they should. And so my initial thought was, all right, well, maybe the restore, because I was restoring config from a, a non-UDM-like device to a UDM device, maybe I just need to rebuild this thing from scratch. So basically what I did is I completely wiped everything in the router, all my VLANs, all my firewall rules, everything, and I rebuilt everything from scratch in hopes that maybe a clean configuration, there was maybe some kind of weird thing that got pulled over from the old config or something that just didn't um, move over right from old, an older gateway to this newer style gateway. And so I was like, well, that'll probably fix my issue. However, it didn't. 
And so some of the things I was experiencing in my network was, um, you know, was streaming. For example, I'd be watching a movie on a streaming service and then all of a sudden it would just almost like the app crash. It would blip and then the movie would start over. And it's never done that before, ever. I've never experienced that. And it was doing it all the time. Like it, it was very, very noticeable. Um, I was also unable to download a lot of files. I was unable to update, run updates on my gear. It would just fail. It says it couldn't download anymore and I would get a failure. Um, at the time I was also building my daughter a Windows 11 laptop and I was just trying to download a new version of Windows or a fresh copy of Windows onto a thumb drive. It would fail every time. I ended up having to take my laptop to work in order and use their network in order to download the installer file. And so I just, all this weird, weird stuff was happening once the UDM was in place. And so, you know, in my head, I was thinking, man, this should be running better. I got 10 gigabit and I was, I was getting no errors on my ports. Everything was connected as it should be. It was all linked up. It just wouldn't work. I was just seeing all this weird, weird things happening on the network as it pertains to my internet connectivity. I even went as far as trying to replace the apps and re-download re them and install them on my TVs and my Fire Sticks because I was like, well, maybe there's some weird thing that going on there too. I don't know. I was trying just about anything I could think of. So I did what pretty much all of us do in this world when we don't know an answer. We go to Google and we start asking Google what's going on. And I came across this post, which I'll put a link to this in the video. Now there's a lot of good information in this and it's several pages and it's all from within about the last six months. So to me, that to me means it's fairly relevant. This is a newer issue. There's people in here talking about how they've run the UDM Pro for the last two years with uh, Verizon and never ran into an issue and then it just started. So my, my assumption is with this is that it um, was created with an update and hopefully will be resolved with an update down the road if as more and more people start talking about it. Um, but as I started reading down the post, uh, a lot of people, a lot of the content that people were talking about said that this solved their issue by disabling the generic receive offload or GRO. Now, the only way you can do this is to SSH into your UDM Pro and set it up. And on the downside, if you reboot your device, you have to do it again. It doesn't hold that configuration unless you uh, build in some sort of script that runs, which again can be broke with updates. I mean, it just, it's not a really awesome workaround because it requires you to, you know, continually to do something in order to make it work. But a lot of people did have um, good luck with this. Again, running the same model of modem that I am running in a very similar situation. However, I'll kind of sum this up for you um, and you can read through this. There's some really, really good content in here talking about it. Some of these are with older versions. Um, I'm currently running uh, 8.1.113 currently. Um, so I'm running the, the latest official version at the time of recording this. Um, so some of the people in here are talking about older versions, but at the end of the day, I think it's somewhere along the lines of when version eight came out that this problem sort of reared its ugly head. Um, but a lot of people did have a lot of good um, results by running this, this SSH command to uh, basically disable this GRO on the WAN interface of their device. So I got a little excited. I was like, well, okay, if I, I can handle that and I don't reboot my P, my UDM pro very often. So I'm like, this is not a big deal to me. And eventually they'll fix it with an update and we won't have to worry about it. However, this command did not work for me. Um, it just, I was able to successfully run the command, but it didn't fix my issue. Matter of fact, I couldn't tell any difference at all. Um, some of the people in here suggested that it fixed part of their issues. Some of them said, yep, this worked for me hundred percent. So again, maybe that's just the different scenarios. Maybe it's the different versions we were running on the Verizon side of things. Um, which I did check for updates on my Verizon side, just to see if there was something going on there. But, um, if you guys are maybe experiencing something similar, guys read through this, you might have different results than I did. The other thing that people sort of talked about was that it could be an MTU issue, that these five gigabit links with the ISPs um, don't, you know, they kind of handle their packets a little bit differently. And so sometimes adjusting the MTU size um, can help with this. Matter of fact, this person was saying to lower it. 
Um, but at the end of the day, I found that after I read through this, I had enough people tell me that that wasn't the issue. Matter of fact, there's a guy down here um, that says, you know, I work with the uh, MTU extensively for a long time. And he's like, that is not your problem. I trust me when I say this. Um, this is this. It's something else. And so, um, you know, I he's like, here, trust me, I've tested this a lot. It is not a MTU issue. So, you know, you get enough people talking about, you know, it worked or not worked. That wasn't the right solution for me. So um, as it stands today, guys, the issue is still present. I still have it going on. I was unable to find a solution. My hope is that by talking to you guys, um, you know, either someone out there has come up with a solution for this um, or or a workaround that works. My workaround, in all honesty, um, isn't probably something that you guys would want to do. But since I was not getting the issue with my um, my USG Pro, I basically just put that back into the mix. Now, granted, if I had faster than one gig internet, this wouldn't help me. But being that my internet speeds max out at 300 megabits per second, um, it really wasn't going to slow me down. So basically what I did was is I, I went back and I reintroduced. It won't show up in my, in my diagram here, but I reintroduced my, um, my USG into the mix. So basically... I have my normal setup with my UDM Pro. I'm my entire network is all configured. Everything is being run off the UDM Pro, and then between my UDM Pro and Verizon, I put my USG Pro back into the mix. So basically, it is just acting as a WAN device, and unfortunately, it's also acting as another NAT uh, device. So I have like triple NAT going on here in my network, which sucks. But at the end of the day. Um, the issue went away immediately. The second I reintroduced that USG back and connected it to my WAN port, all my issues went away. Everything was able to still be controlled down here in my lower network, but I did not experience any of the WAN issues. I can download Windows. All my updates started t kicking off. Everything I described earlier went away. So um, I also have some other devices. I have a UXG Lite. No issues with that. That's actually what runs my neighbor's networks. Um, off the Verizon 5G internet. And so it's a, it's separate. That way I can work on my own home network and not have to interfere with their uh, connection. And it's it's all run off a of UXG Lite. No issues there whatsoever. It, that has been solid. I talked to them. Nobody's experiencing any weird issues. This is something solely with the UDM Pro. Now, I also have the, uh, the new uh, Express router from um, the Gateway Express. And I also have a gateway ultra that I plan on testing to see if they uh, struggle with the Verizon 5G home internet, but I haven't done it yet. Um, I'm just happy to have this issue fixed for now. Okay, guys, so that is my scenario. Now I know my videos, typically I'm helping you. I'm trying to help you build a great network and design things. In this particular case, I guess I'm asking anyone out there to try and help me solve this problem. Now, I read a lot on this, uh, lots and lots, and I only showed the one page that I found, uh, but I read Reddit posts and, and many people had different solutions to this problem. Some of them went back to their old ISP because they didn't experience it with them. Some of them just pulled out the Ubiquiti UDM gear and just went back to their old Wi-Fi system. I mean, no matter what, there was, someone had to do a workaround unless that particular um, SSH command worked in their case. And there was a lot of that. I was really bummed that that was, couldn't be used as a, as a success thing in my setup. So um, I hope that together we can find a solution. If you guys have experienced anything like this, put it in the comments. If you have something you want me to try, put it in the comments. And I will, I will actually try your suggestions if it isn't something I've, uh, I haven't tried already. Um, I'm happy to give it a whirl. Um, but I've tried the disabling smart cues. I did mess with the MTU size a little bit. I mean, I've really did try to do the suggested stuff. I think this is just a compatibility issue between Verizon 5G and this. My hope is that it will resolve itself and I can eventually take the USG for, uh, Pro 4 out of the equation and not need it anymore. But in the meantime, 
please share your thoughts. I hope it helps you. I mean, as you guys build homes, everybody's looking for a way to have affordable internet. And the Verizon 5G has been very, very good to me. This is the first issue I've really run across with it. Um, and so my hope is that this thing can be fixed. I really don't want to uh, change internet providers because I really I only have one other option here and I hate that option. So uh, my hope is that we can fix this. And in the meantime, the way I have it set up right now works perfectly fine for me. It's just a, a little speed bump uh, in the mix. So, all right guys, uh, that's it for this video. I hope uh, together we can find a solution and we'll see you guys down the road. Please let me know if you have something you'd like me to try. Thanks.